Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Popsicle, a sweet new show where our guests and I lap up what's new in pop culture. My name is RJ from RJ's Food Rocks, and today we have a very special guest. Um, she is a t- Twitch screen. Oh, my God. She is a Twitch queen who reigns supreme in our hearts and in our screens. It's Mike. Hi, Mike. Holla at me. I know you know me. Holla at me. I know you know me. Michael is here. Hello. Hello there, RJ. How you doing? I'm good. I did not know we were like doing props today. I didn't. I, I didn't bring any. Oh, absolutely, we're doing props. Um, also not sponsored, but my Truly's <laughs> beverage. It's truly the best. <laughs> Amazing. Mm, good. Well, thank you so. <laughs> thank you so much for joining. I am wearing. I am wearing merch. I'm wearing my Shea Kool Aid T-shirt today. So I'm. That's my. Oh my god. Homage. All today. Stars Five winner, of course. Yes. Oh my god, I'm wearing flowers in uh, response to Sasha Velour. There you go. <laughs> we coordinated, absolutely. Exactly. I trigger you, so it's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, today on the Popsicle, we will be unwrapping the currently wrapped up season or currently wrapping up season of RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, we are building up to tomorrow. By the time we release this episode, tomorrow will be the grand finale where a winner will be crowned as America's next best drag queen. So here is your TCDE Too Cold Did Neat uh, traditional in, in RuPaul's Drag Race uh, format. 13 queens participate in challenges to compete. Who will um, be each week's challenge winner, um, and they uh, f- try very hard to avoid being the bottom two, where they have to lip sync for their lives, and are at the mercy of RuPaul's decision on who she tells to Shante, you stay, or who has to sashay away. So we have built up the season. Now we are into the final four. Um, so here is your final four. Uh, we have Simone. Uh, she currently has uh, four wins and she's just, I don't know, amazing. <laughs> she's just truly fantastic. Um, the Ebony Enchantress. Yes, the Ebony Enchantress herself. We have Candy Muse. Uh, she currently has one win and she is, you could say, like a very like force of nature um, with her like very Bronx attitude, but also just, <laughs> you know, effort, just very charismatic, um, uh, which is like, a, you know, very controversial for a lot of fans because a lot of people are either they either love candy or they hate candy and it's it's fun tv uh, nonetheless we have got mick uh got mick has two wins she is kind of like the fashion queen but has really surprised herself and us with um her comedy and her acting um uh performance in the show um she also makes uh history as she is the first trans man uh contestant in repulse drag race history and finally, we have Rosé. Uh, Rosé is a New York queen with three wins. She's kind of like the triple threat. Basically, she sings, she dances, she acts. She's she's really funny. She's great at a roast. Um, and she's kind of like the total package when it comes to who you want as America's Next Drag Superstar. Um, the really important and interesting thing about this season was that it was fully produced and shot um, during COVID-19 with a uh, full COVID-19 procedures. They were... Um, isolated and they had like protocols in the shoot in the shoot um of the show uh even with the guests like they had guests sometimes with full masks like full uh face shields when they visit them backstage um they also just kind of like rotated um with like the same guests every episode so that they kept their bubble very close so let's go into uh, what we usually do in the show where we talk about what we like and what we didn't like about the pop culture that we are consuming. We're going to start with the sweet um, of the stuff that we did like. Um, so with the sweet, I want to say the top four, I'm I'm going to say it's pretty like talented uh, across the board. Um, I want to say it's a nice even split of, I think, who could be the winner. Um, what do you think, Mike? Do you feel the same way I do? <laughs> No, I don't think all four of them could win. <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, um, I definitely think um, Candy. She did, it was a great. What did Blair Saint Clair said? She said, "Juju B, nice try. Candy Muse, nice try." <laughs> so we have a top three. It's Simone, Gottmik, and Rose. I think they'll have something beautiful to offer. I think. Rosé really does have it all. She has everything that you can do, but do we want a perfectionist? Do we want somebody that's vulnerable, like Simone, who has that star quality, but effortlessly, like you said, just effortlessly, like the Ebony Enchantress. She just has 
an aura around her. RuPaul said it herself that she's a star. And yeah. Gottmik, honestly, yeah. the beginning, my top four, it was definitely Simone, it was Rosé, it was Olivia Lux, and it was Denali. So I, seeing Candy Muse and Gottmik up there, I was very surprised. I wanted Gottmik to get there, but I was like, I wasn't sure how she's going to do with acting or comedy. And not only did she like do well in those, she won most of those challenges. So it was very surprising to see that. So honestly, Simone Gottmik Rosé, I'm happy for all of y'all. Congrats. Y'all are really talented. Gottmik and Candy did kind of like shake things up because you didn't expect, um, you really didn't expect them to Definitely. be in the final four. I think Got has been like my mm. favorite to watch because we're watching her realize that she is actually good at other things. And it's like, oh, this is so nice. Like mm -hmm. the fact that she came in and like won a lip sync her first day, won snatch game and it's just, and won the ball. Like, you know, if you are a, ball, if you are yeah. a st statistics nerd, like I am sometimes with these things, it's like snatch game ball, uh, makeover like those are really big ones that you want to win and and typically the people who win those kind of like have a pretty good track record to win the whole thing and so i think got mick has a really good chance but i am gonna uh, simone it's simone for me <laughs> it's it's the simone for me it's the simone i mean the 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 performances incredible the runways the runways where's the bad runway where is she? I don't see it. I just don't see it. <laughs> Simone's runways, absolutely. I think every single week kind of like stood out as amazing. The the train runway where it was the do rag, amazing. Oh Beautiful. my god. Um, the stopping. furry, the beast, the beast runway where she was full furry, like full banji furry. I'm like, this is brilliant. So smart. Oh my god. You know what that reminded me of? Do you remember the show on? Comedy Central, drawn like, together, drawn, drawn together. together. That's what it reminded yes. me of, of, of Foxy. Yes. Exactly. Foxy. I was like, was oh my Foxy. God. Absolutely. I was like, D come on, references. Yes. That was really beautiful. I really like that and runway. I, I mean, we can't forget about her all white runway. The one where it's the all white, the beautiful like thing, turn around. Yes. I mean, that's incredible. That is yeah. I topical. she does a really good oh. job of like really yeah making everything effortless with like just um she has so much like swagger and um like she just knows that she has something special. So when she does something yeah. like that all white dress that you know is like a, a protest and a and a like she's trying to speak out about police brutality like it's very clear because we are so glued to her and she's such a presence on stage that, absolutely you know you get to listen to it um one of my favorite things that i've seen this season is utica sleeping bag dress i'm not gonna lie i am not gonna lie to you oh. like candy candy is so my controversial gosh. but utica is probably just as controversial but man this girl's little sleeping bag dress shook me to the core <laughs> Good morning, campers. Oh, my God. It was absolutely stunning. It really was. I mean, seriously, like being able to make that in that amount of time, like, of course, they compare, you know, hers to uh, Lala Reese, which was like six bags on a corset, whatever. But like, look up literally every other contestant and what they made. Candy Muse glued backpacks to a, a body suit. And then like, I mean, come on. Utica literally could not have done any better. Like, th there's nothing better she could have done with the sleeping bags. A difficult thing to, like, sew with. But the construction overall, absolutely Utica. I do want to point out, like, in the beginning of the season, we were served um, with basically, like, two opening uh, episodes where the oh there God. was a gag where everyone came in and... They basically paired everyone up and then the three at the end and they had to like lip sync for their lives and one person would stay and one person would go. And the people who all won the lip syncs thought that they were like, that's it. This is, you know, it's a COVID season. We're the season. Like, this is the show. And then all the queens who lost the, lot, the lip sync had to basically like vote each vote one person out so that everyone else can stay um, just to kind of like mix up the, the room. Um, and then, but in all actuality, everyone, that was all kind of just like a gag so that they can all start um, 
individually. So the six had like their own runway and own winner. And then the other six had their own runway and their own winner. And then they put the two teams together. And then finally the real show started where people get eliminated one at a time. I really like the gag. I'm a big survivor, big brother fan. So I do like when they do have to vote each other out. I think it's like a fun thing of like you can see really like who are the people that are prioritizing this as like I have to win this competition and who are the people who are like I am here just to be part of the show to be a rue girl and like really just like make community and it's just interesting to kind of like see how people kind of flip flop between those because I think we do like we were people are fans are mad when the queens want to win a competition um but then like fans are mad when it's the other way around. So I, and also I like when they split the season starter because you get to meet the Queens individually. Like, yeah, I don't think I would have known who Elliot would two T's were. Um, if I didn't have to be forced to see her for three episodes. (laughs) So what did you think of the opening? Forced her career on us. (laughs) Um, I loved it. Absolutely. They, they, they really said, Elliot with two T's, this is your show. This is the Elliot with two T's season 13, um, which clearly did not pan out the way she wanted. Um, I loved the gag. Um, I do wish in the formatting of the episodes, because it was the, um, the lip syncs, then it was the winners do their song, and then the losers do their song. Kind of wish the losers did their song, because in live time, watching the winners, and then it was like, Oh, now let's watch everyone who didn't do a good job. It was like, "Mm, maybe we can introduce us, Mm -hmm. then see the losers, then see the winners, and then the show starts. And I was like, okay, that'd be a little bit better. But it definitely, like, created a lag in the episodes. And then the first episode was an acting challenge, again, which was not a strong acting challenge, personally. So it was just kind of like, okay, we know these queens, we know these queens, we know these queens. Like, if there was something a little bit stronger to hold us interested, because... The minute we saw the pork chop loading dock, no one's going home. We knew nobody was going home. So knowing no one's going yeah. home for that, knowing yeah. no one's going home for the song or the other song, episode four, we're starting to eliminate people. I mean, how many episodes was the season? 15? 14 maybe? And we had nine eliminated queens? Yeah. Uh, Are you kidding me? <laughs> No, I didn't. No, that's definitely way too much. I I saw all these queens. Like, what else do you want them to do? Like, they've done everything. (laughs) Yeah, I I think that, like, it was, yeah, it was kind of like a blessing and a curse. Because I think in the beginning, we were all like, wow, I'm really getting to know each person. But then in hindsight, Mm -hmm. you're like, oh, this means, like, this is, like, gonna drag. Um, So... That's yeah, that's interesting. And we'll get to like it later and why why it was so long. But um, I do want to point out just some other stuff that I really loved about the season, not related to the show at all, but the pit stop, which is like the recap show on the weekend. The With episode Trixie. comes out that is host. Yes, it's hosted by Trixie Mattel this season, but every season they usually get a different host. It is so funny this season. It's just like Trixie. I could feel like they're like the Trixie so and the drag queen that they interview are just kind of like so not over it, but like they are a lot like <laughs> harsher to the girls because it's like, come on, girl, like you can do better than this. So and it's just fun to like um, just watch them. Like I we just, the Monet episode is uh, great. I want the Bendela Crab episode is so oh funny God. because like you get to see Trixie and Bendela as they're talking about the current season, realize like trauma that they had when they filmed their all-star season. And they're just like, wow, I can't believe we actually dressed up as giant soup cans. (laughs) Like it's just crazy. It's so funny. (laughs) I loved that where she was like, oh yeah. Um, Yeah, this is the challenge you won. You don't remember anything about it, but you know, BB said, oh, well we need nuts for this soup and it might be a little bit too spicy. And we did. And we're not making soup. I loved that. Oh my god! I loved Dela's episode. Jinx Monsoon's episode was absolutely hilarious. Oh I think my she's on god! Two of them, maybe? Oh my god! And then yeah, Violet Tashi she... for the bag ball. Oh my god! So funny. We couldn't get better people. No, couldn't no. get better people. I don't like this. No, no. I don't bad. like it. <laughs> she looks bad. I didn't like it. No. <laughs> Violet Tashi, did you like this look? No, I didn't. No, I really didn't. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god but yeah the pit it's stop was so pretty good. incredible um finally i'm just gonna throw it out to the girls who did not make the finals but we love them nonetheless i'm gonna throw mm. it to my girl kamora hall my chicago queen i went to college with uh, with kamora um oh, and so i love her she interviewed me for her like thesis um like thesis project it was very nice it was very oh, sweet and um, and you'll see that clip kamora. right over here just click right over here and you'll see that clip <laughs> Beautiful. The, the thesis project with Kamora Hall and RJ. Uh. Yeah, Kamora was doing like a her her project was like interviewing like interracial um, gay couples and just like you know the sociological impact of that like culturally like how it affects. I know. Wow. I was like gagged. Yes, that's amazing. Seriously, amazing. she's an intelligent queen. I love it. Yes. I, and I, I really love Kimora and also really love Denali. Yeah. I, like I said, like you said, I think Denali, Denali should have been in the final four. Uh, I love my Chicago queen so much. Um, and finally, we can't, we cannot talk about the season without talking about Tamisha Iman. Tamisha Iman, who is coming for you. <laughs> to show the girls what I could do. She showed the girls what she, she could do what is I go home do. third. Apparently that's what she could do. Go you know her. what? It's, <laughs> I will say with Tamisha, like she was clearly brought in as like, I mean, the story with Tamisha was that she was originally supposed to be Jada Essence Hall spot in the last season, but because she had to yeah. have like surgery, like for, she is, she's a cancer survivor. So it's like, mm -hmm. she had to like be in the hospital and wasn't able to do it. So when she was asked back for 13, she was like, I will do it. I don't care. I don't care oh, if yeah. I'm out first. I just want to be there. And um, it's nice. I love it when they bring like queens who come from like a pageant background that come from like a dynasty, like Tamisha. I'm I'm oh obsessed God. with that the, because the it's, of the dynasty of there's so much like it's beautiful. Yes, there's like a heritage, like a history that you just feel when they're on TV, mm -hmm. and it's it's nice to like she was able yeah, to get a so lot much, of um, attention. Yeah, so much that we learned from it as well. Like they learned about the ball culture and all that stuff with that. They were talking Tamisha and Lala were talking about the ball culture and everything and educating people about it. She's done drag for 30 years. She's a biological father. Like there is so yeah. much that Tamisha has learned and they impacted that in, well, I guess like seven or eight episodes, but like three episodes of her, you know, d talking about that. And then of course she is a, an outspoken character. So she definitely, wherever she could, slipped in her two cents and hello, hi, hi, little girl. Little girl. Little girl. <laughs> Uh, all right. So now that we've talked about the sweet and what we've loved about uh, this season, let's get into the sticky of the stuff that we didn't like. Uh, we've already said it too long. This season was too long. This too, long. too long. Too, <laughs> too damn and long. And so, like, essentially, what ended up happening was that they were going to do another season of Celebrity Drag Race, but due to the pandemic, they weren't able to film any. So they absorbed those four episodes that would have been in Celebrity Drag Race into um this season so we had four extra episodes and so they just had to kind of like Great. make stuff up so <laughs> so i do understand like opening obviously like by splitting it up to three separate episodes so that knocked out a lot of it and also like knowing that knowing that there was four extra episodes you know that a double save was going to be coming let's talk about this double save do you think this double save should have been should, should the du to. one double save have been <laughs> simone and candy no, I absolutely do not. And you know, I'm actually going to scroll by because I'm definitely certain that it should have been between Olivia and Denali because Olivia had a lot more to offer and Denali had a lot more to offer. So I think that's when it should have been used. But I also think producers were kind of sweating because they're like, uh, I don't know, these lip syncs haven't been really tight. Like it's, it's, we definitely know who's losing every week. So they were like, L this one yeah. looks pretty good, pretty decent. Like we don't really want to lose them. And also, Candy was going to go home that episode, so. Yeah, what's really interesting about the double save is that you do have an expectation now that, like, it could happen once a season. Um, and yeah. I think we've set a precedent now that, like, there is an expectation that there will be one. And it kind of takes away the, like, surprise when it does happen. Like, when... Um, uh, there was one season where Cameron Michaels and Eureka both were double saved, and I was like, I don't know if that should have been a double. Save. It should not have happened. That like, should not have happened. <laughs> but there are some seasons where it is good, like when Brooklyn Heights and Evie Oddly were in the bottom, and they were both double saved because they were 
that was an amazing lip sync. So I think they just have to kind of Sharon and Fifi. Yeah, absolutely. So it's like we have to keep, uh, I don't know. I love it when they gag us, when they keep us on our toes. Uh. So I hope that like by in the future seasons, they don't kind of just like sink into stuff that, um, that ends up being expected. That's all. Um, and I don't think they will. I don't think they will. Cause I know that seasons sometimes get formulaic. Like, do you remember the first, I think it was five seasons where they did um, immunity, where if you won the challenge, you would gain yes. immunity for the next yep. challenge for like the first, like half a season or whatever. So they definitely did that burned out of that. And then they started doing this thing where it's like, Oh, it's either like, you know, a double elimination or a double save, or, you know, we bring someone back from a p- previous season. They did with, Cynthia, Eureka, Vanji, almost sequential, actually. Uh, 8 to 9, 9 to 10, 10 to 11, or that way. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, they definitely have switched it up a little bit. So I'm hoping that once we start getting comfortable with these norms, that they're already changing it like as they're filming, as we're like, eh, we don't really like this too much anymore. Because we don't really need a double save. We don't. I don't think there was on season 12 which there probably didn't need to be. No, there was. There was. The one with uh, Jackie, right? I think Jackie got saved from that or something like that. Jackie and Heidi, they were double yeah. saved. That was a choice. They both went home next, so. I know, exactly. That's the thing with <laughs> the double matter. saves. It's like, usually what ends up happening is that you see what's going to happen. Like, you see another lip sync right after, and I was like, that probably could have been a better double save, but since yeah, they've already done it once, it really- they've already used it up. So, like... Like in your yeah, example, this, I think Denali and Olivia would have been a more appropriate double saved. save. But I will say, um, when you were saying earlier, there really wasn't like a clear like, oh, I don't know who it's going to be from the lip sync. It's very clear that like one it's person was true. good and one person was bad. in the lip sync. <laughs> yeah, I will say like now that we've kind of have this really long season, they have reordered a lot of the... Um, challenges and i'm i'm Mm -hmm. curious to know what your take is because i'm not really a fan of how they order things right now i understand why they're doing the ball so early in the seasons now because they want to give the girls the opportunity to show their different looks and you know don't just go home after showing two looks essentially Mm -hmm. so i understand that but it's like it's if the last challenge before the final four is an a bad acting challenge it's not exciting mama i don't want it i don't want it that's my least favorite challenge. It's my least favorite challenge. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want it at all. No. I hate the late se- the late season acting challenge. What was it? There's nothing memorable about them. I mean, there was Breast yeah. World in season 10. Completely mm-hmm. awful. Everyone did bad. Everyone did bad. No one does good. No one Everyone did bad. <laughs> I mean, in this one, the Honey I Shrunk the Drag Queens, or Henny I Shrunk the Drag Queens, literally, Rosé only did good because no one else did good. Like, it was, like, Rosé's yeah. was tolerable and everybody else's was bad. But it wasn't their fault either. Like, not Olivia's fault. The, it just sucked. The writing sucked. The show sucked. Like, there was nothing good about it. It was nine and a half minutes. Mm-hmm. Why did that need to be nine and a half yeah. minutes? No, thank you. Way too long. Oh, my no, God. thank you. <laughs> it was boring. It was not interesting. I mean, I get that we should do an acting challenge. But, like, the Gay's Anatomy in season 12, that one was really good. I liked that. That was an earlier season. But still. Like, maybe we should do, um, instead of that, like, they always, they, they, they um, sometimes have, like, a singing challenge. That'd be nice. Maybe even another sewing challenge. I do like yeah, sewing bring challenges. Back. Bring back something with, like, a different type of talent that we haven't really seen. Or, you know, just rehash something else. Make them do Snatch Game, but be a different drag queen from a previous season or you know, I mean, I think there's many different challenges yeah. that they could do. Put them on the streets and make themselves cherry pie again. You know, there's so many different things that they could do. <laughs> they could do anything. Yeah, I agree. I think um, I think it's 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 a shame when the material isn't as good, and then they're judged for like not being able to carry bad material mm-hmm. that already was bad in the first place. Like oh, I can only God. think of the farmer musical from that one season. I'm like. This was bad. <laughs> oh my god! We have to talk I, about Utica. I know you don't want to, but to. we have to talk about I know, Utica. I, I want to. I want to now. I'm feeling mean. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about Utica and how Utica. she's an improv performer. <laughs> she literally does improv in a troop. Oh my god! Uh, Jesus. Okay. 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 Hold on. So. 
now we've oh. kind of established in Drag Race that there is a trope of like the quirky girl. We got the crystal method. Um, mm-hmm. We got the milk. Um, you know, like that kind of like I don't kind of fall. Fa- you know, my 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 drag is like an art form, but also it's like poking fun. Um, it does feel like Utica is doing it on purpose and sometimes she doesn't really actually know what she's trying to do so it just kind of comes off as like well you know i want it to be like crazy and like thought provoking but i don't actually know what the thought i'm trying to provoke like i'm an earring like come on like what's what's (laughs) what's hard is that like she does have like she's great she has great craftsmanship like we said like she could have won the boss challenge she really Um, does she's very talented sleeping down look was really great so that kind of like helped carry her throughout but it's it's this like kind of like kooky personality that really shot herself in the foot multiple times one with bob ross she did a bob ross snatch game which was nothing like bob ross and this will go down as one of the worst snatch games in history but i don't really think utica cares she's like oh my god i had i had such a great time and you know it was like i had so much fun it was so exciting to be there and like what did you girls think what did you think um, but I do have to say, her Bob Ross, I have to ask you a question. Do you think Bob Ross could be done well on Snatch Game? I think if you do Bob Ross, it has to be prop comedy. It has to be full deadpan. Because that's what's funny about okay. him, is that he's just like, sure. you have to full deadpan it. So you need to be like a good actor. Sorry, you need to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be talented. So better luck. <laughs> it's true though i really do think that they could have done that i was watching actually um bob ross's show what is it oh, it was painting with bob ross and in the beginning they show these colors and it's like the funniest names for colors it's like dark azure green and you're like these these colors don't make any sense like you could have been silly with that um bob ross is very deadpan he's very straightforward he's very silly like he could have said, like, you know how um, a lot of queens, they resort to, like, saying, like, inappropriate things, like, your butthole or whatever. Yes. Like, he could have yeah. said that, like, oh, and then they were going to use their butthole inside your face. And you're just like, yeah. oh, my God, that's funny. Because, like, he's just, like, casually saying it. Like, so I really think that it could have worked um, just if Utica didn't do it. <laughs> I'm not even talking about the squirrel ha- tail afro. Oh, That's no. not even worth mentioning because at the <laughs> end of the pass, day, whatever. at the end of the day, the Bob Ross was bad. I don't even care if you had cotton balls or daffodils on your head. Oh, the Bob no. Ross was you bad, so we don't need to talk about the fashion. doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really bad. Viewers oh. and listeners, I wish this was the end of the road for that Utica conversation, but it's Same. not because if you thought that was bad her roast was even worse and i had to mike i had to put the volume down to one because i I couldn't i couldn't listen to her i could not listen to her i don't have the shout and fraud in me where like i laugh when (laughs) other people are miserable i don't have that gene it's not i get so embarrassed (laughs) for the person so i literally i I didn't yell it's happening (laughs) Adam had to walk out and just like started pacing in the room. Oh I literally, <laughs> I, been it. It. I like turn it down. And as soon as I saw Lonnie Love about to heckle Utica, I was like, max volume up again. And then I was like, okay, yeah, I'm good. hold on. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Attached to speaker is something like, I need to hear this. It was so bad. It was so offensive. It was so wrong. I don't think anything was funny about it. And I think that goes back to with the, um, the, uh, the roast, not the roast. The um, what is it? The the little quips that they have in the mini challenge, the reading challenge. Um, yes, it wasn't too great either. It wasn't really that good. So I mean, I think it was just definitely you know you're not going to do good in something that you had time to plan. I don't really know if you're going to do well in the comedy challenge. And Utica did. It wasn't even like nobody's laughing at your jokes. There were no jokes. Come to think of it, Utica didn't really do good this season. <laughs> she didn't do good in that disco <laughs> challenge she didn't do good in Sebastian. didn't do good in that uh what else didn't she do good what was the episode what was this episode uh the, oh, the, the, um, the, com- the comedy challenge, challenge. another acting, yes, challenge the acting challenge for our for... acting queen utica it's so uh, sad. well i you know we were we were all entertained so at least we have that to get us through yes yeah 
So to wrap up the season, um, I would say that like this was really a unique season, you know, the longest in history. Um, uh, But it was nice to kind of like bring us back to appointment television again, where it was like, oh, it's Friday night. I'm busy to watching Drag Race. And if you think about it, like uh, the devil works hard, but World of Wonder works harder because the entire pandemic (laughs) was tracked through a Drag Race property. We had season 12, then Celebrity Drag Race, and then like Drag Race UK and Drag Race um, Netherlands. Um, Holland, and Drag yeah. Race Canada, Holland, yeah. And then we had like the Drag Race uh, Vegas review, and then we have this season, and then we had an All Stars. Like, truly, the entire year was lined with Drag Race. And so, I will say thank you to World of Wonder for yeah. for feeding the queers this season this year <laughs> for creating seventy five new careers this year, seventy five new jobs in the workforce. We appreciate it. <laughs> Unemployment rate for drag queens are at an all-time low. Thank you. All-time low. Yes, the Zoom the Zoom tips are just uh, just raining. Oh my in. god! <laughs> Zoom stocks, baby, get your Zoom stocks. They're going up. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh my god well thank you everyone for joining us on this episode of the popsicle if you're watching on youtube go ahead and comment below and let us know what you think about this season of rupaul's drag race and who you are rooting for to win this season i'm gonna say it i am Joey team J. simone slash <laughs> Shut the- <laughs> <laughs> oh don't even talk to me about joey J. uh <laughs> like we pass with. wow Filler queen plot twist. No, girl. That was it. Was written <laughs> yeah, in the plot. No, it's filler queen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god. god! I am Team Simone slash Team Got Mick. I really can't pick between the two. So who are you? Got Mick, Simone, Rose. Got Mick, Simone, Rose. I got to. I'm not mad at either of them, any of them. But yeah, Got Mick, you've really shown up and shown out. Simone, been pretty consistent throughout like we knew what you had to offer we knew your ups and downs from the start so that was consistent rose where where's the flaw so it's like it just depends what you want to win it was like season 12 where it was like who do you want to win do you want jada essence hall do you want gg good do you want crystal what's your type of drag and that's really how it yeah i mean they're all winners i hate saying that i'm not really that you know oh my god i'm not that person i'm not that positive (laughs) I'm not that positive. Yeah, I'm not that positive about it. Where I was like, oh, we have a top four. No, we have a top three. And we're going to discuss our top three this season because Candy's not winning. And if she is, it's going to age really bad. I'm canceled. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, if you are rooting for someone, please let us know. I- I- use the hashtag Team Candy, <laughs> Team Got Mick, Team Rosé, or Team Simone. <laughs> and and let your two voice weeks, be heard. We'll announce our winner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> oh, my God. I oh, had my so God. Much fun. This is so much fun. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Of course. So if you are listening to us on the podcast, make sure you leave us a rating, a review. Tell me what you think of the show and what you'd like to hear more in the future. Um, every couple of episodes, we do a book club. Um, our next book is What's Mine and Yours by Naima Coster. And that episode is going to drop. Uh, let me pull up my notes. That episode is going to drop mark on calendars. May 27th. <laughs> so yes, mark your calendars. You have now until May 27th to get a copy of Naima Coster's book. Um, there is a link on the episode notes below um, and on the uh, whatever podcast app you're listening to so you can get a copy. Mike, please, uh, you've been such a great guest, so please plug away anything you would like to plug for people to find you. Well, I'm actually going to be in the uh, Music Man revival on Broadway. I will be filling in for Hugh Jackman um, during recent allegations. So um, you guys can check me out there on Broadway. Um, Yeah, Beetlejuice, you never stood a chance. I'm going to be there. No, um, I, (laughs) I don't do too much, but I'm on Twitch. If you guys like video games, if you like chatting, if you like um, gay stuff, uh, twitch.tv forward slash effect plays TTV. I'm there whenever I want to be. And I'd love for you to be there too. Ding. Thank you, RJ. Ding. 
Thank you so much. You can find me, <laughs> RJ, at RJ Food Rocks on all of your social media and my YouTube channel, RJ Food Rocks. Premieres a new video every week. The Popsicle is a part of the Ampliverse. You can find all of our shows on the Ampliverse.com and here on the Ampliverse YouTube channel. Thank you again for listening, everyone. This has been to Bo- The Popsicle. Thank Bye. You.